Have you ever wondered how can a religion leave traces in human DNA? It sounds paradoxical because faith cannot be inscribed onto chromosomes. And yet in modern genetic testing, the term Jewish ancestry often appears. This surprises many people. How can a DNA test identify a community defined by religion and culture rather than by a fixed race? The answer does not lie in religion itself, but in history, geography, and patterns of marriage. For thousands of years, many Jewish communities maintained strong internal bonds, partly due to historical circumstances of exile and dispersion, and partly due to cultural religious rules that limited intermarriage. This kind of genetic isolation gradually produced distinctive signatures in their DNA. Not absolute, but strong enough for scientists to recognize a red thread running through centuries and across continents. This opens up a fascinating journey from 3,000-year-old skeletons unearthed in the ancient Near East to the Ashkenazi Jews of Europe, the Sephardic Jews of Iberia, the Mizrahi Jews of the Middle East, and even small isolated groups in Ethiopia, India, and China. All of them in one way or another still carry a piece of shared genetic heritage. In this sense, DNA acts like a biological time machine connecting us to stories that once existed only in scripture or legend. It allows scientists to test questions such as do the tales of Abraham Moses or the Babylonian exile reflect a biological truth have the so-called lost tribes truly disappeared or do their echoes still survive in far-flung communities? And perhaps the most compelling fact of all is this. Despite wars, plagues, massacres, and millennia of wandering the core genetic identity of the Jewish people, endures. It bridges past and present transforming the story of one nation into a living testimony of human resilience. In the next section, we will follow the trail of DNA to uncover where did the Jewish people truly come from? How did they migrate and change? And why has their genetic identity remained intact across thousands of years of history? The genetic story of the Jewish people begins in the ancient Near East in the region. Historians call the Levant today's Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, and parts of Syria. Archaeological records place the earliest Israelites around 1200 BCE living side by side with their Canaanite and Phoenician neighbors. At first, they were not genetically distinct. They were one of several Semitic-speaking groups sharing the same landscape. What set them apart was not their DNA, but their evolving religious identity the rise of monotheism rituals, and laws that emphasized community boundaries. Modern genetic research confirms this backdrop. DNA extracted from 3,000-year-old skeletons in Israel, and Jordan shows clear continuity with present-day Jewish populations. The most common paternal lineages, haplogroups J1 and J2 on the Y chromosome, were prevalent in the Levant in antiquity, and remain common among Jews and their neighbors today. One striking example is the so-called Cohen modal haplotype found at high frequency among men who identify as Kohanim, the traditional priestly class in Judaism. Geneticists trace this lineage back roughly 3,000 years aligning with the biblical era of the first temple and the priestly line of Aaron. On the maternal side, mitochondrial DNA tells a slightly different story. Many Jewish groups descend from a small set of female ancestors who lived in the Near East thousands of years ago. These founding mothers left an imprint that still appears in Jewish mitochondrial lineages today. The combined picture is remarkable despite conquest, exile, and migration. A core Levantine genetic signature has persisted within Jewish communities for millennia. DNA is not faith, but it mirrors the geographic cradle of Jewish history. The destruction of the first temple by Babylon in 586 BCE, and especially the Roman destruction of the second temple in 70 CE marked turning points. These events scattered Jews far beyond their homeland. 
This diaspora gave rise to distinct communities shaped by geography, yet linked by shared ancestry. Over centuries, three major branches emerged Mizrahi Jews, those who remained in or near the Middle East and North Africa. Their DNA is closest to the original Levantine pool. Jews from Iraq, Iran, and Yemen fall into this category. For example, Yemenite Jews remained relatively isolated for almost 2,000 years, preserving a genetic profile that blends Levantine roots with slight Arabian influence. Sephardic Jews, whose center was Iberia, modern Spain, and Portugal. They lived there for centuries, mixing Levantine ancestry with local Mediterranean and North African influences. After the expulsion of 1492, Sephardim spread across the Ottoman Empire, North Africa, Italy, and the Netherlands, carrying their unique genetic and cultural identity with them. Ashkenazi Jews who arose in the Rhine Valley of France and Germany around 901,000 Orocene CE before migrating into Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, and Russia. They experienced repeated bottlenecks population crashes from plagues, massacres, and persecution. These events left a lasting genetic stamp reduced diversity, but also a distinct set of lineages. Ashkenazi DNA tells a complex story. On the paternal side, most Y-chromosome lineages point firmly to the Middle East. On the maternal side, however, a majority of lineages trace back to European women, likely converts who married into Jewish communities during the Middle Ages. This mix explains why Ashkenazi Jews are not purely European nor purely Middle Eastern, but a fusion that nonetheless retains a strong Levantine core. The consequences of isolation and bottlenecks were not only cultural, but medical. Certain rare genetic variants became common within specific Jewish groups. Ashkenazi Jews have higher frequencies of Tay-Sachs disease and Gaucher disease. Sephardic Jews show prevalence of familial Mediterranean fever. Persian Jews carry elevated risk for certain adrenal disorders. Paradoxically, these medical burdens have also enabled geneticists to trace ancestry with precision. One of the most intriguing aspects of Jewish genetics is the search for the lost tribes of Israel. According to the Bible, 10 of the 12 tribes were exiled by the Assyrians in the 8th century BCE and vanished from history. But did they really disappear? Modern DNA studies suggest echoes of those tribes may survive in unexpected places. The Lemba people of Southern Africa tell oral traditions of descent from ancient Jews. Genetic analysis confirms unusually high frequencies of the Cohen modal haplotype among Lemba men, the same priestly lineage found across Jewish populations. The Bene Israel of India preserves stories of Jewish traders arriving on the Indian coast centuries ago. Their mitochondrial DNA shows Middle Eastern roots alongside Indian markers, suggesting male migrants from the Levant intermarried with local women. Beta Israel of Ethiopia practiced Judaism for centuries in relative isolation. Genetically, they cluster closer to Ethiopian populations, but retain a detectable layer of Middle Eastern ancestry. Kaifeng Jews of China descended from Persian merchants who settled during the Song Dynasty. Over centuries, they largely intermarried with Han Chinese, yet maintained Jewish rituals until the 19th century. These groups remind us that Jewish identity is not purely genetic. It is a tapestry woven from memory, tradition, and faith, as well as ancestry. To most Americans, the typical Jew is Ashkenazi. In the United States, roughly 6.5 million out of 7 million Jews are Ashkenazi. Yet worldwide, especially in Israel, the majority are not. Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews make up a larger share, bringing their own traditions. The centuries of separate development created striking differences. Cuisine, Ashkenazi Jews gave us bagels, matzo ball soup, gefilte fish, and kugel foods shaped by the cold climate of Eastern Europe. Sephardic Jews brought dishes like shakshuka mufleta and richly spiced stews influenced by Iberia and the North Africa. 
both follow kosher law, but Passover traditions differ. Ashkenazi Jews traditionally ban legumes kitniot, while Sephardic Jews do not. Language. Ashkenazi Jews historically spoke Yiddish, a blend of Hebrew and German with Slavic touches. Sephardic Jews spoke Ladino and Haketia blends of Hebrew with Spanish or Portuguese. Both preserved Hebrew, but with different pronunciations. Religious practice. Both follow Jewish law, but codified it differently. In the 16th century, Sephardic rabbis compiled the Shulchan Aruch, a central law code. Ashkenazi rabbis added glosses highlighting differences in practice. Wedding customs diverged. Sephardic brides often celebrated with henna. Ashkenazi brides circled the groom seven times. Religious movements. In Europe, Ashkenazi Jews developed denominations like Reform, Conservative, and Orthodox influenced by the Protestant Reformation. Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews living in Muslim lands did not undergo the same denominational splits. Their communities evolved differently, less fractured by Western ideological battles. Despite differences when Jews from different backgrounds meet today, whether in New York, Jerusalem, or Casablanca, there is an immediate sense of kinship. The shared DNA signature reinforces what culture already tells us. Beneath the surface variations, there is a common ancestry rooted in the Levant. What then does the DNA of the Jewish people truly reveal? At one level, it confirms what history and tradition have long claimed a deep connection to the ancient Near East, a genetic signature rooted in the hills of Canaan in Jerusalem, in the cradle of Israelite history. Whether one trace is paternal Y-chromosome lineages or maternal mitochondrial DNA, the results consistently point back to the Levant some 3,000 years ago. But at another level, the story is far richer and more complex. The Jewish genetic record is not a straight line. It is a mosaic shaped by exile and returned by intermarriage and isolation, by survival under empires and adaptation in new lands. Ashkenazi Jews with Middle Eastern fathers and European mothers, Sephardic Jews blending Iberian, North African, and Levantine roots, Mizrahi Jews carrying a continuity of ancient Near Eastern ancestry, Beta Israel, Lemba, Bene, Israel, Kaifing. Jews all demonstrating that identity is carried not only in chromosomes, but also in ritual memory and story. Genetics has also put to rest certain myths. The idea that Ashkenazi Jews are primarily descended from the Khazars, a Turkic people who converted in the Middle Ages, does not hold up against genome-wide studies. Instead, their DNA shows the same Levantine thread woven through other Jewish groups. Yet, science can only go so far. DNA may tell us where people came from, but not who they are. Jewish identity has never been defined by genes alone. It is equally a matter of covenant faith and shared cultural practice. Two Jews might look very different genetically, an Ashkenazi man from Poland and a Mizrahi woman from Iraq, yet both recite the same prayers, celebrate the same holy days, and feel an unbroken link to a common story. Perhaps this is the real lesson of Jewish DNA. Not that it creates a single uniform people, but that it testifies to endurance through diversity. Across centuries of dispersion, Jews remained uh, connected enough through community, through endogamy, through memory, uh, that even today, geneticists can still trace their shared ancestry. And beyond science lies a broader truth. DNA may act as a time machine, but it cannot capture the resilience, creativity, and spiritual depth that allowed the Jewish people to survive exile after exile, to thrive in countless cultures, and to return again and again to their traditions. So the next time you see the phrase Jewish ancestry on a genetic test, remember it is more than a statistic. It is the echo of an ancient homeland the imprint of migrations across continents, the record of suffering and survival, and above all, the living bridge between biology and culture, between past and present. 
The Jewish genome tells us where they came from. Their traditions tell us why they are still here. 